ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر والها وانما توعدون لات وما انتم بمعجزين one day umar ibn al khattab radiyallahu an may allah be pleased with him our master our khalifa the great companion he saw a man making dua in the masjid in the city of the prophet in the masjid of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he saw this man making dua and he heard this man saying allahumma ja'alni min al qalil allahumma ja'alni min al qalil which means o oh allah make me from the few make me from the few and umar he was surprised after the man finished he asked him ma hadha alladhi tad'u bi what is this you are asking allah for you're sitting in the masjid of the prophet you're asking him to make you among the few and the man he said to umar radiyallahu an he said inni sami'tu allah yaqul wa qalilun min ibadi yashkur the man said i heard allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the quran in the verse wa qalilun min ibadi yashkur how few how few are among my servants those who are grateful those who exhibit gratitude those who exhibit shukr so the man he said i wanted to ask allah to make me among those few min ulaika al qali from those few who are grateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala umar he looked at the man he said kullu nas a'lamu bi umar he said today everyone has more knowledge than umar radiyallahu an so from this verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa qalilun min ibadi yashkur how few are those people who are grateful there are only two types of people in the world everyone can be divided into two either you're grateful or you're not grateful in arabic the word great gratitude is ashkur the opposite of that is kufr linguistically kufr is the opposite of shukr shukr means to be grateful for something you enjoy and kufr means to reject something that you enjoy be ungrateful for it and it also means disbelief so kufr has two meanings but in arabic the opposite of being grateful is, is kufr So a kafir the reason a kafir is named such someone who rejects belief is because he rejects the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we we should ask ourselves there's only two types of people. There's the majority and there's the minority. If you can say there's the 1% and the 99%. The minority are those who are grateful. Wa qalilun min ibadi ash-shukur. The majority of human beings are ungrateful. So here you need to ask yourself which side do we want to be on what category do we fit in we need to take a hard look at our lives are we among those who exhibit gratitude and shukr in our lives or are we among those majority of human beings who generally are ungrateful for everything that they enjoy and in matters of belief they're ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we want to take a deeper look today 
continuing the topic from last week, the topic of shukr. A little deeper look at what is shukr. Shukr is one of, as we mentioned, one of the most important commands in Islam. One of our central teachings in Islam is a shukr, being grateful. And it's also, it's, it's, a, it's basically a mental outlook. It's a frame of mind. It's an orientation. It's not really something that you do or say, although there are things that you do and say that exhibit shukr. But basically it's a frame of mind. It's a frame of mind and it's a positive emotion. There's a lot of interest in contemporary psychology in looking at these types of emotions, gratitude. And now there's a lot of studies on gratitude and people are talking about ways to develop gratitude to make your lives healthier. But it's one of the most central teachings of Islam. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says, a shukr is one half of iman and the other half is sabr, being patient. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commands shukr in the Quran in many, many verses. Among the verses, Surah An-Nahl, فَكُلُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا Allah says, eat from, the, from what Allah has provided for you. From the good and pure and halal things He's provided for you. And then He says, وَشْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ And be grateful to the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if indeed you worship Allah. So Allah commands gratitude in the Qur'an in more than one verse. Allah praises those who are grateful repeatedly in the Qur'an. Allah describes gratitude or people who are grateful as a special quality, as people who belong to a special group. Allah made it a goal of His creation and His command. How many verses we read end with لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ It's one of the purposes of our religion, to make us grateful, to teach us how to be grateful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He promised the best rewards for people who exhibit gratitude. وَسَنَجَزِ shakirin. We shall reward those who are grateful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of His beautiful names and attributes, He chose two names that are related to gratitude. Ash-Shakir and Ash-Shakur. Two of the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are related to shukr. Ash-Shakir, the one who is grateful, and Ash-Shakur is in more intensive meaning, the one who is excessively grateful. And it's also, these are names Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only chose for Himself, but He also chose it for His creation. He allowed us to use these names. And Allah describes some of His servants with these attributes, Ash-Shakirin, Ash-Shakur. So these are words that are so beautiful. Allah used them as His own names, and He allowed His creation to have these names as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants shukr. Gratitude is one of the things He wants us to exhibit and to show in our lives. In Surah Al-Zumar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In takfuru فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنْكُمْ وَلَا يَرْضَى لِعِبَادِهِ الْكُفْرِ Allah says, if you reject or if you're ungrateful, then Allah doesn't need anything from you. But He does not want you to be ungrateful. So Allah is saying that if you reject Allah or if you're ungrateful, those are the two meanings of kufr, Allah doesn't need anything from you. He doesn't lose out anything. But at the same time, Allah doesn't want you to be ungrateful. And then He says, وَإِن تَشْكُرُوا يَرْضَهُ لَكُمْ Rather, if you're grateful, Allah wants that. Allah is pleased with that. It's something that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And shukr is something that goes back to our earliest history from the foundation of human beings. The story of the creation, when Allah created Adam, and He tested him in Jannah, Jannah al-Firdaus. And then Adam alayhi salam, he failed the test due to the misguidance of Iblis. Then Allah gave him the, Allah gave him the command to live in the earth. And Allah sent Adam to populate the earth. And that began our story here on this planet. At the same time, Allah ejected Iblis from Jannah. And at the end of that story, Shaytan or Iblis, he says something very interesting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After Allah ejected him from paradise and Adam alayhi salam, Iblis, he says, قَالَ فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ صِرَاطَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ ثُمَّ لَآتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ And at the end he says, وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ So Shaytan, he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, because of how you ejected me from paradise, or now that you kicked me out of paradise, he promised Allah that I am going to be waiting for Adam and his descendants on your straight path. So Shaytan made this promise. He's going to be waiting for human beings. He's not going to leave them alone. 
And he says, I'm going to be in front of them. I'm going to approach them from behind them. I'm going to approach them from their right, from the left. Yani he's not going to leave human beings alone. And then he promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ shakirin. And he says, you will find that the majority of them, أَكْثَرُهُمْ, are not grateful. It's all about gratitude. Our whole test in this life is about shukr, about gratitude. And that's shaitan's promise, that he's going to try his best. He's not going to leave us alone for a second. He's going to try every means all around us to delude us and to make us what? Ungrateful. وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ Again, majority, minority. Minority, qaleel. Qaleelun min ibadi shakur And the majority as shaitans, وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ from kathir That you'll find the most human beings, they are ungrateful. But my brothers and sisters, it doesn't have to be that way. Once you understand the importance of gratitude, once you understand that this is what is, our life is all about, then we have to understand how to engender gratitude. So what is shukr? Let's take a little deeper look at shukr. One of our, the, the most important commands. A shukr or gratitude basically has to do with one thing. The blessings, the ni'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot understand gratitude without first understanding all the blessings that we enjoy. We enjoy so many blessings, so many bounties, so many good things in our lives. And as I mentioned last week, no matter how difficult your life is, you're still enjoying so many blessings. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا If you were to even begin listing some of the blessings that you enjoy, this applies to everyone. Don't say this applies to people who have a job, or I'm jobless, or I'm homeless. No! Every single human being is enjoying Allah's blessings. And if you were to enumerate them, there's no way you can even be to accomplish that. As Allah says, if you were to count the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never be able to do so. Allah says, أَلَمْ تَرَوْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ سَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنًا <clears throat> Allah says, have you not seen? Reminding us about His blessing. He says, have you not seen how Allah, you know, He subjected everything in the heavens and in the earth to you. All the blessings of the heavens all the blessings of the earth to us. وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَهُ And he pours down, he uses the term asbagha, which is like a storm. He pours down blessings upon you. ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنًا Blessings that are open, that are obvious, and blessings that are less obvious, that you, you require deeper reflection. So all of us were enjoying the rain, the fruit, the deluge of Allah's blessing. It is so much that it's like a, a storm as Allah says. He's showering us with His blessings, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, shukr is our response to Allah's blessings. That's the point. A shukr, gratitude, is our response to the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The definition of our scholars, they say a shukr in Islam is the manifestation of the effects of Allah's blessings upon the tongues, upon the actions, and upon the, the, the limbs and the hearts of His servants. This is Ibn al-Qayyim's definition. That shukr is our response to Allah's blessings with our tongues, with our hearts, and with our deeds. So, my brothers and sisters, we all have to be grateful. How do we be grateful? There are four steps. As Ibn al-Qayyim mentions in Madarij al-Salikin, there are four steps of shukr. Number one, you have to acknowledge the blessings that you enjoy. If you don't even acknowledge that, you think that your life is hard, you think Allah hasn't given you anything, you think that, you know, life is tough, you're not going to be grateful. The first step is to acknowledge that you enjoy the blessing. Look at your life. Look at things in a positive uh, light. Look at all the blessings that you enjoy and acknowledge them. Number two, you accept them. So the second step after acknowledging the blessings, you have to accept them. This is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. And you accept them. And number three, you praise the one who gave you those blessings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you acknowledge the blessings. You accept them in your life, and then you take the next step to praise the one who gave you the blessing. So you say, Alhamdulillah, you, you praise Allah in all the ways possible. So if you don't praise Allah, and you just accept the blessings and you enjoy them, then you're not grateful. It's like people, if you give, you, know, you give gifts to someone and he doesn't even say thank you, he doesn't even acknowledge them, he just takes them and enjoys them and he thinks this is right. How would you look at that person that you're giving the gifts to? That person is ungrateful. 
So we as servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to acknowledge the blessings. We have to acknowledge that Allah is giving us so much. And we have to accept those blessings and then we have to exhibit praise for the one who gave it to them. And the last step, the fourth step. Now, these are the four steps. Many of us don't take that first step. That's why the majority of human beings are ungrateful. Some of us take that first step, but then we don't accept the blessings. So we, 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 we get stuck at the second step. Many of us take the first and second step, but then we forget to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't praise Him. So we, we get stuck at the third step. The fourth step, which is the majority of fail to reach, is that you don't use those blessings in a way to disobey the one who gave them to you. If you give someone something, like suppose you give a gift to someone and uses that gift against you. You know, what would you feel? How would you feel? So the highest, the fourth step or the greatest step is that after enjoying all of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't use them against Allah. We don't use them against Allah. That's the opposite of shukr. So most human beings, even Muslims, we fail. We enjoy the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet we disobey Him. We don't listen to Him. We don't make salah. We don't do our command. And we do things that Allah hates. So if Allah is giving you so much, and you do things that he's not pleased with, what does that say about your state of gratitude? So my brothers and sisters, we all need to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us need to be grateful. All of us enjoy blessings upon blessings upon blessings from Allah. You can't even enumerate them. But at least we need to take the steps to be grateful, to exhibit gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some of our scholars, they say, based upon all of this, there are different levels of shukr. So when you take all four steps, even after that, there are levels and degrees of gratitude. So they say the first level is being grateful for the blessings we enjoy. That's what we talked about. But there are even higher levels. There's a higher level, which is, you know, it's easy to understand we're grateful for the things we enjoy. What about being grateful for the things that we don't like? That's a higher level of shukr. And believers, sometimes they're tested with circumstances, they don't like them. But still you have to be grateful because Allah is remembering you. There are so many wisdoms and blessings behind tribulation and trials. So we need to be grateful for the things that we like and the things that we enjoy. But also for those things that are difficult in our life, we don't necessarily enjoy. We still need to be grateful. That's a higher level of shukr. And finally, the highest level is mentioned by our scholars as a state of perpetual gratitude for everything that exists because the real believers, all they see in the dunya is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everywhere they look, any situation, they see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They see the good in every situation. So the highest level of shukr is the level of the real believers. They're grateful and they have shukr in every moment of their life, every circumstance. It's not related to anything they're enjoying or anything they're experiencing. It's continuous shukr. Just for being alive, just for seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His signs in the creation just for having the opportunity to worship Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, let us take steps in our life to inculcate shukr, to be grateful. Let us at least acknowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us so much and so much in our lives, every single one of us, some of us more than others. But let us be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the second half, we'll look at those things, some practical steps to engender gratitude in our lives. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi kareem. وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد. So today we're looking at a shukr. And we mentioned there's only two types of people in the world. Only two types of people in the world. Those who are grateful and those who are ungrateful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful that he established a law in the universe. He established a law in the universe. He says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ This is one of the few verses that where Allah says that He announces, your Lord announces. 
he announces a general law. La in shakartum la azidanakum. What is this general principle, a law of the universe? La in shakartum la azidanakum. If you exhibit gratitude, your blessings will increase. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we exhibit gratitude, Allah gives us even more. This is a law of the universe. If you are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will shower you with more and more blessings. But if you are to be ungrateful, then know that my punishment is very severe. So this is something very, very important. If we want to hold on to the blessings we enjoy, we have to be grateful. Otherwise, they, they are taken away from us. Umar bin Abdul Aziz, he said, Qayyidu ni'am Allahi bi shukrillah. He said, hold on to the blessings of Allah that you enjoy with the shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by being grateful to Allah. This law is evident in the entire universe. It's not just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us so much more when we're grateful. But when you look at, you can apply this to human beings. And there are very interesting studies in modern psychology that look at that. There was one study by, they looked at a jewelry store. And they found that customers of a jewelry store who were called. So they looked at, you know, calling the customers to thank them for their purchases. Versus those who just purchased something and they never heard from them again. Those customers that were called by these, the, the owners of this business to thank them, just to thank them, thank, thanks for coming in, they had a 70% increase uh, likelihood of coming back to the store and making more purchases. So 70% of those people came back. This is the law of the universe we're talking about. That if you're grateful, generally blessings increase. It applies on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also between human beings. There was another study in a restaurant. They looked at when they gave the, the customers the receipts or the bills, if they put thank you on the top of the bill, there are greater chances of getting tips. Those people, you know, the, the customer that received thank you, you know, a receipt that said thank you, they gave greater tips to the owners than the ones who didn't. This is the same principle. Generally, when we exhibit gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the blessings increase. And even in between, between ourselves, generally when you live lives of gratitude and you thank each other, you know, the lives become better and the blessings increase and the goodness increase. So let's look at some steps. I want to share with you seven steps to increase gratitude in our lives. Now that we know the importance of shukr, now that we know how important it is, how central it is to our religion, to our deen, and this is the success of our dunya and akhirah depends upon shukr. What are some steps we can take home? Number one, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for shukr. The most important step in every situation is to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So not only we take steps, but number one, let's begin by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for shukr. We mentioned last week beautiful hadith where the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, he took Mu'adh by his shoulders. And he said, Wallahi inni la uhibbuk. He said, Ya Mu'adh, I love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Mu'adh he said, He said, May my mother and my father be ransomed for you, O Messenger of Allah, I love you as well. And the Prophet gave him an advice. He said, Ya Mu'adh, never forget one thing. Do something for me. He said, La fi dubri kulli salatin an He said, At the end of every one of your prayers, don't forget to say the supplication. What is that supplication? Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. He said to Mu'ad, don't forget to say this. Every end of every one of your prayers, say, O oh Allah, increase me in your remembrance and in your shukr, your gratitude, and in the best of your worship. This is a beautiful, beautiful dua. We should all make it in our prayers. This is the legacy of the Prophet ﷺ to his companions. And Mu'adh, he taught all his students this hadith, this dua. And all of his students taught their students until this hadith reached us today. Those who narrate this hadith, narrate it in the same way. The student, the teacher tells the student, I love you. And then the teacher tells him this beautiful hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. So the first step for shukr in our lives, turn to Allah. Ask Allah to help you. Ask Allah for shukr. Make this dua or any other dua. Ask Allah, oh Allah, make us among the shakirin. 
Allah, make us among those who are grateful. Allah, give me gratitude in my life. Number two, we need to stop complaining. We complain too much. Overall, human beings, if we look at our lives, when we talk to each other, when we talk to our friends and our family members, most of what we talk about is complaining. And as, as a physician, I can testify to that. I know people come to doctors generally when they're sick. But when you ask patients how you're doing, or you ask your friends how you're doing, what kind of responses do you get? Some people say, Alhamdulillah, I'm doing great. But generally people complain, you know, the economy is hard, you know, it's tough these days, I can't find a job, I can't do this, you know, things are very difficult. It's our nature as human beings, we complain too much. We complain too much. We need to stop complaining. Sometimes you look at the positive, you know, every situation has many aspects. You know, you can look at a glass that has some water in it as being half empty or half full. It depends on how you look at it. But when we start complaining to each other, it's contagious, and everyone starts becoming depressed, and they start spreading that, and you know, let's stop complaining. Let's start enjoying the blessings and, and having positive attitudes. When we talk to each other, instead of complaining, let's talk about the positive things. Let's look at the things that we enjoy in our lives. Generally, the questions we get, even as, as religious leaders, people ask questions like, you know, why is this happening? Why does God allow suffering? Why does God do this and that? Nobody ever asks, why do we enjoy so many blessings? Why is God giving us so many chances? Why does Allah give us and give us and give us? Our minds don't go there. Generally, we look at the negative things and we ask these negative questions. So the second step, let's stop complaining. Get a hold of ourselves, let's stop complaining, let's look at the positive things and let's do something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, if you want a practical step to engender gratitude, Look at those who are less fortunate than you. Look at those who are below you and not above you. Our problem is we look at those who are better than us. We look at those who have a bigger house than us. We look at someone who drives a better car than us. So we're always looking up. And that always makes us depressed. We want to be there. We want to live in that house. We want to have a better car. We want a better job. We're always looking above us. But we should be looking below us. And that would increase our gratitude. And this is a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, "Unzuru ila man huwa asfala minkum, wala tanzuru ila man huwa fawqakum, fa innahu ajdaru alla tazdaru ni'mat Allah alaykum." Beautiful words. The Prophet said, "You should look at those who are below you and not those who are above you, because that is more likely for you to be grateful for Allah's blessing. It is more likely when you do that that you're grateful rather than ungrateful." So we should look at those who are less fortunate. Everyone who's in a situation. There are tons of people in worse situations than you. If you don't have a job, there's people who don't even have a house. If you're homeless, at least you're in a house where people, you're in a country, people aren't shooting at you. If you're sick, there are people with worse illnesses. So generally, we should be looking at those who are less fortunate. We should be working with those who are less fortunate. We should be involved in efforts where we help the needy, like the winter coat drives that the sister did, like soup kitchens, like feeding drives, like the relief work that Muslims are, some Muslims are engaged in. That's one of the best things we can do in our life. Because when you work with people, and you work with those who are less fortunate, you become more grateful. It increases your iman. And you're living the foot, in the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ. And generally people who do that, they're grateful. They're, those people are more positive and they're more grateful in, your, in their lives. Number four, we should count our blessings sometimes. You know, sometimes we're on autopilot, we're just enjoying things after things, and we never really take a moment to think about the blessings we enjoy. Sometimes it helps to sit down, either write the blessings down. So some people recommend have a success journal. Write down the things that go good in your life. You know, we all remember the things that are bad, the things that we, the trials that we, we endure. But how many times have we written down the things that we enjoy? Something good happened to you. Someone said something good to you. Some, you know, you got a good job. Write these things down. Or think about them at least. Take time out to think about these blessings. We, we rarely do that. We should sit down and take time out to think about these blessings. You know, take a mental moment. Take five minutes of your time. In salah, remember these blessings. Start counting before you go to bed. When you wake up in the morning, think about all the good things that happened during the day. And thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them. If we don't think about them, then how can we be grateful? We're on autopilot. But we should be actively thinking about the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll never be able to list all of them. 
But at the same time, we should try. That's part of gratitude. So we should, every day at the end of the day, we should close the day by looking at, okay, these are the good things that happened for me today. And say Alhamdulillah for that. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Number five, we need to be in the habit of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we thank Allah? One of the best ways, very simple, say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Say that again and again in your life. Say Alhamdulillah generally. Thanking Allah for all the blessings you generally. <clears throat> and also specifically. You know the Quran begins with what? What are the first words in the Quran? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The entire Quran, this manual for our lives, contains so much good. These are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which words did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose to begin the Quran? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. This is a lesson for us. The most important thing in our life is being grateful. And by saying Alhamdulillah, saying all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to be grateful in general and specifically. So not only we say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah as much as we can, but look at specific blessings and thank Allah for them. When's the last time you thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something specific in your life? Not just saying Alhamdulillah, but thank you Allah for allowing me to come out of this situation. So say Alhamdulillah for specific things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does that in the Quran. This is a Quranic message. How many times does Allah say, Alhamdulillah illadhi hadana lihada wa ma kunna linahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. Allah doesn't just say Alhamdulillah, but He says Alhamdulillah teaching us with specific things. So one of the verses, all praise due to Allah who guided us to Islam. And we would never have been guided except if it had not been for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. Alhamdulillah for Allah who gave the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a book that contains no crookedness. So how many times does Allah teach us how to be grateful for specific things? So we should take that as a message for our life and say Alhamdulillah for this and for that. We should say Alhamdulillah generally but also Alhamdulillah for this and Alhamdulillah for that. So we should get into the habit of that. Number six, we need to proclaim our blessings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Duha, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكْ فَحَدِّثْ The end of the surah, a beautiful surah. At the end Allah says, As for the blessings of your Lord, فَحَدِّثْ What does فَحَدِّثْ mean? فَحَدِّثْ means talk about them. Hadith is, a, is something, is a speech. So Allah is saying, proclaim the blessings of your Lord to the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, and to all of us. So in other words, everything that we enjoy, we should be talking about it. Don't keep it inside. Why do every time we talk, we talk about the negative thing? We should talk about the positive thing. We should be in the habit of, of, of discussing these things. So it's so beautiful, the weather is beautiful, there's so many good things that we're enjoying, our community is going through. So Alhamdulillah, Allah blessed us with this, Allah blessed us with that. Talk about your blessings. This is, it. the Qur'an commands it. So we should be in the habit because this is contagious. If you complain all the time, then everyone starts complaining. And the whole mood changes. But if you, if you share the blessings and, 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 and are positive in your outlook, in your speech, then everyone becomes positive. It's contagious. And finally, the last step, step number seven in gender and gratitude in our lives. The Prophet والسلام, he said in a sound hadith from the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, Man lam yashkurin nas, lam yashkurillah. He said, whoever doesn't thank people will never be able to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we want to be grateful to Allah, one of the ways is to be grateful to each other, to thank each other. So this is something we forget. Sometimes we forget to do that. Oftentimes we forget to do that. But the Prophet is reminding us, thanking each other is part of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't have one without the other. So ask ourselves, when's the last time you ever thanked anybody? Our, our children, when's the last time you thanked your parents? When's the last time you went to your mama and your, and your baba and said thank you for this dinner, thank you for this, or thank you for sending me to school? Husbands, when's the last time you thanked your wife? Wives, when's the last time you said thank you to your husband? And our friends with each other, when's the last time we thanked each other? This is the sunnah of the Prophet Part of being religious doesn't mean that you don't talk to each other and you don't thank each other. But saying thank you, shukr. 
The Prophet is saying, Man lam yashkuri nas, lam yashkuri la. Whoever hasn't thanked people has not thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should be in the habit of thanking people, giving thank you gifts, giving cards. There's, there's good traditions in this society we can take advantage of. We're all human beings. We should take the good in every society. In this society, there's a, there's a tradition of, of thanking. You know, um, when, you, when you do something good for someone, often you get a card, a card, you know, a thank you card, or you get flowers or things like that. That's a beautiful custom. That's an Islamic custom. And too many of us as Muslims, we don't live lives like that. But we should be thanking each other with words and with deeds. These are some of the steps that we can take to make our lives more grateful, to engender gratitude in our lives. And really, at the end of the day, it's all about attitude. You know, when you change the way, as one of the, the wise people said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at actually change. So when you change the way you look at things, your situation changes. If you're positive, your situation will become positive. If you're negative, your situation will remain negative. And at the end of the day for believers, it's a matter of our success in dunya and akhirah. It's our success in this dunya and our akhirah. It depends, it depends upon shukr. Allah says, مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِن شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ شَاكِرًا عَلِيمًا Allah says, Allah doesn't want to punish you. He will not punish you as long as you're grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you believe in Him. It's very simple. You want to escape the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone's goal is that in the next life. It's very simple. In shakartum wa amantum. Be grateful and believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For verily, wa kana Allah shakiran alima. Verily, Allah is all grateful and all knowing. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the shakirin, among those who thank each other and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, among those who are successful in this life and in the hereafter. Allahumma arina al haqqa haqqa wa rizukna tiba'a. Wal batila batila wa rizukna shtinaba. Allahumma tawafana muslimin. Wal hikna bil salihin. Wayra khazaya wa la maftunin. Allahumma aslih lana deenan alladhi huwa ismatu amrina. Wa aslih lana dunyan alladhi fiha ma'ashina. وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا وجعل الحياة زيادة لنا من كل خير والموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك وأغننا بفضلك عمن سواك اللهم آمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, Hayya ala al-Salah, Hayya ala al-Falah, Qadqamat al-Salah, Qadqamat al-Salah, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, لا Uh, 
الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأم فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله سمي الله لمن حمده الله 